Welcome back guys. My name's Sandy. This is Sewing with Sandy. It is unseasonably warm out right now. It's just above zero. And a few days ago, if you were around, you would have seen me sort of scrambling to get my tire chains on and to get my snowblower on. Well, the tire chains are doing their job. They're getting me out to locations like this without problem. But you'll quickly notice that I've exchanged the snowblower already for my Wallenstein winch. I put this back on because I'm finding that this is my favorite tool to have on the back of the tractor. This gets used an awful lot. So what I'm going to try to do is keep that winch aside, snowblower aside, and keep that winch on the tractor because I am using it more often than I ever thought. Anyways, as I said, it's definitely unseasonably warm out here today. Uh, I don't know what's going on with the weather, but I can tell you one day we'll get like a foot of snow, the next day it'll melt away, and that's sort of where we're at today. I had a few logs that I skidded out here a moment ago, and I got to tell you that that was definitely a light load. I'm just doing some basic cleanup. I brought these three balsam fir out here. Uh, I wouldn't have cut these down on purpose because they are quite small, but the trees are getting blown down left, right, and center. Every time we get some sort of significant wind around here, balsam firs hit the ground. So for those of you who say, why do you cut down such small trees? I don't. Those right there are hitting the ground. I'm just cleaning them up. And I've got way, way, way more of those to show you, but that's for another day. We had a pretty significant storm last night. As I said, those balsam fir, they're going to be getting cut up. I'm going to cut up what I have here into some 2x4s today. Don't really have a purpose for any 2x4s right now, but I can always use them, so I'm going to cut them up and stockpile them for now. You would have seen me just load those with my bucket. That is not common for me. On the front of my tractor, I normally have a root rake that's got a grapple. Uh, my version's the HLA 66-inch unit. Real good unit. I've used it for years, but I didn't have it on today, so I figured I would just use the choker. A choker chain I just used uh, used to uh, pull the logs up there with a the hook on my bucket. Worked pretty well. Anyways, another thing I brought today, luckily my memory didn't fail me today. I brought this guy. You've been around the channel, you've probably seen this guy before. This is my backpack blower. Brought this out of the shop. I'm going to fire it up here today and get this, uh, get this deck cleaned off. If you look here, there's all kinds of sawdust. And anytime we get any significant snow, what happens is... The snow blows in because I don't have walls here, or at least I don't have the tarp walls on here. And what ends up happening, it gets the dust all moist and then it freezes. And if you can imagine when it freezes to the deck, that is not a pleasant experience to get rid of. Down here, one last thing, I'm just about to put down the boardwalk. If you haven't been here before, this boardwalk allows me to get my finished lumber from the sawmill shack to the lumber shack or shed and stack it up. I got nothing here because I've used all this lumber recently for my equipment shed build, but we're going to start, I guess, building back up our pile and, well, I'll have some projects to use it with real soon. Anyways, that's about what we're up to. As I sort of look over my right shoulder, I notice that my slab rack is completely full and then some. I think what I'm going to have to do is probably get out here with the forks on the tractor and maybe lift it up and set it off to the side. I'm going to end up using this not for wood chips, not for firewood this time, but I'm going to use this to go over some of my wet trails. The winter time is the perfect time to put it there on those trails because I can drive over them with the snow machine, throw the, throw the slabs on the ground, and then in the spring when the snow melts, the slabs will be there. Hopefully won't give me the muddy mess. Anyways, let's get down to it. Glad you guys are all here. Here we go.
just in case you're brand new here and just before we get cutting I'm going to show you the laser that I've used for the last little while. You can see it down here on the side of my sawmill. This right here with the switch, that's the power source. It's two AAA batteries. The wires obviously run to the laser itself. It's a green laser line. It's uh, horizontal. Uh, I'll give you the specs down in the description, but it's good below zero. I think it's good to negative 10 Celsius. And uh, it's not that today, but I have had it below zero and it works well. I'll put that, as I said, description, um, all the details in case you're interested. I use this to help me with where the blade is gonna cut. It saves me from having to break out a tape measure. Anyways, let's get down to it. I'm just double checking that the measurement on my scale, which is seven and a half inches, marks out at seven and a half with the laser so that the laser I know is relatively accurate. In a perfect world, I'd have a plumb stick, some way of having the measurement taken uh, directly up and down, but I can eyeball it close enough.
All right, guys, just taking a little break here in between cuts. I got some two by sixes cut. I originally thought I was going to make all two by fours, but I don't know. Sometimes I just cut what the what the log looks like it should give me, and that, that was two by sixes. Anyways, just to address a few questions that many of you guys asked me uh, in the comments in previous videos, some of you guys asked me about uh, some of the things that are on my sawmill, my Woodland Mills HM130 here, that is not on your sawmill. This is a 2017 model, so it's definitely a few years old. Uh, some of the things you guys have seen and, and commented on and asked me about was, what's this thing down here? See this hardware here and that, that chain mechanism down there? That's the lap siding attachment Woodland Mill sells. It basically allows you to tilt the sawmill head and uh, cut, the, cut the profile for lap siding. That's probably looking different than yours if you don't have that. Uh, if you want to see that get installed or see that in use, check out some of my other videos. Uh, that's where that comes in. Other things you guys have mentioned to me is where is my yellow blade, gu uh, blade guard that goes right here on some of the newer sawmills? Well, in 2017, these were not sold with a yellow blade guard. Uh, I understand they are there now. Uh, I haven't taken mine off. Mine just didn't come with one. And so that's that. Um, one other thing, maybe two other things. You'll see right here this tube. This is uh, supposed to be connected to my lubrication tank right up here. It is not. I'm currently not running any lubrication. The logs are fairly fresh. They're still pretty wet. And the logs that were wet and have now froze are quite slippery. And so I don't find I need the lubrication at this point. Um, I'll talk about lubrication in general in another video. For the most part, if it was warmer out and non-winter season, I'd have straight water in there. I've experimented a little bit with all kinds of solutions with mixed reviews. I've got other videos where I've blown off blades uh, playing around a little bit, but normally it's straight water in there. In the winter time, you will see me with this stuff real soon. That's straight washer fluid. That's the uh, same stuff you put in your car, quite inexpensive, non-toxic, and uh, that's what I use. Anyways, that's just about it. I think uh, we got some lumber cut, and so I'm gonna continue at it. All is good, here we go. Oh yeah, just one other thing that just came to mind before we get back to cutting. Some of you guys have asked me why when I'm cutting lumber, I don't just make multiple cuts and leave the finished piece of lumber stacked one on top of each other. Well, the reason is when I get to the end of the cut, if I leave multiple layers of new pieces of lumber stacked up, I'm going to have to crank the saw head that much higher to back drag to make the next cut. So if you can imagine, you finish a cut, let's say you got three pieces of lumber sitting on top of the one you just cut, you're going to have to crank the saw head all the way up pull it all the way back across the lumber, drop it all the way back down to make the next cut. In contrast, what I do is I make one cut and then I simply reach down and move the lumber. Then I only have to bring the blade up. Well, technically I don't have to bring the blade up. I can just back drag, drop it down a little and finish the cuts. Anyways, that's what I do. On that point about back dragging, when I do back drag, you guys will notice that I make probably half a revolution of the crank to raise the saw head, maybe just a a full crank in order to raise the saw head before I pull it back across the lumber to make my next cut. The reason I do that is this. If that log moves at all while you're cutting through it and it moves up slightly, if you don't lift that saw head and you back drag, when I say back drag, I mean this, pull it back, that blade will actually hit the end of the log. And if you hit it with enough force and I've been there, you actually knock the blade off. In my experience, that doesn't happen very often, probably 99.9% .9 of the time. You can make your cut, pull the saw head or back drag it without problem, without raising the head and uh, continue on. But I have had before where whether the log was under tension or the log shifted slightly because it got bumped or rattled, I don't know. But the log moved a little bit and it lifted itself up just a little bit. I pulled back that saw head with just a little bit of momentum. And if you can imagine, you hit that blade it's gonna pop off the band wheels and then you got a headache on your hand. Anyways, that's my two cents back to it.
Well guys, believe it or not, the sun is starting to set already. It's really not that late in the day, but that's normally my cue to head on up to the shop where I'm gonna make some more sludge, AKA coffee, and probably tackle one other job before it gets completely dark out here. Now this was another good day out here with my woodland mills. As you can tell, we made some lumber. Now I don't make a huge volume of lumber. Most of the time I usually poke around, make a few boards here, a few boards there. Unless of course I've got a major project on the go and a time crunch. Not quite there yet, but that'll probably come. We made some two by sixes, made some two by fours today. Normally when I get them to this location in my lumber shed, I'd sticker them with these stickers in order to allow the air to get around them and dry them. But I'm actually gonna be taking the lumber up to the shop where I'm gonna put it into a place there. So I'm not gonna worry about that for now. Uh, not to mention it's winter time and not a lot dries very well. On the left here, one thing I have to tackle because this is getting a bit ridiculous is this slab wood mountain. This slab wood is normally taken care of with my wood chipper on my tractor, or sometimes I cut it up and put it into IBC cages for burning. Well, I gotta do something with it, but I don't wanna get rid of it just for the sake of getting rid of it. I wanna use this on my wet trails to provide sort of a, well, I guess a bit of a corduroy, corduroy road. I gotta get that to the swampy areas, but I can't get there until the snow fully sets in so I can drive the snow machine. So that's another predicament I gotta figure out. Anyways, it's a beautiful day out here, beautiful life in the woods. If you guys have a chance to get yourself outside, uh, cut some wood, go for a walk, whatever it might be, use the sawmill, make sure you take advantage of it. As always, you guys take care. If you like this video, give her the old thumbs up. Check out my other videos, and I'll see all you guys next time.